one, I, I talked about the home that I grew up in. See, my dad didn't want to have anything to do with God, but, but my mom grew up taking us to church. And so I came to know the Lord at a young age, and I surrendered to ministry at a young age. And when I surrendered to ministry at 15 years old, my dad thought that was absurd. He thought that was the dumbest decision that anybody could possibly make. And God was working on my dad, but my dad didn't really know it at that time. And, and at 15, my dad and I got in a really big disagreement, and, and he kind of made a deal with me. He said, okay, son. I'm going to tell you one thing that I want from you. And in return, you tell me one thing that you want from me. I said, fair enough. So my dad asked me to respect him and my mother more. I said, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And then next, it was my turn to ask him for something. And if my dad were in the room this morning, he would tell you that he would have rather me asked him for a million dollars or a brand new car. But the only thing I wanted was for my dad to come to church with us. So I looked at my dad and I said, Dad, I want you to come to church with me, my mom, and my sister. Kind of grinned and he knew that he had to keep his end of the deal now if I was going to keep my end. And he said, okay. And so slowly but surely, my dad began to come to church. And over the course of a year, he, he would come like once a month. And then he started to come once every other week. And once every other week led to once a week. And slowly but surely, my dad started to come to church regularly. And I'll never forget one day, at this point, about a year had passed and I'm 16 years old. My dad comes through the door in his police uniform on his lunch break. And I never seen my dad cry, not one day in my entire life. My dad had tears coming down his eyes. And he walks through the door and he looks at me and he says, son, I want you to be the first person I tell this to. And I kid you not, I, I literally thought my dad was about to tell me he just shot somebody. And I'm like, oh no, don't, don't tell me that. He says, Robert... He says, today I couldn't hold on to it anymore. And I went into the pastor's office and I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And I, I yeah, we can get excited, but I'm still excited about it. And it's been a long time ago. Because here's what I began to discover about God, right? And here's what I know to be true about Jesus. Jesus has never saved anybody that he didn't change. Y'all know that? Right? It's, imp it's impossible for me to receive the gift of grace that God has to offer for me and to have the living spirit of the one true God inside of me and to be the same person that I was before. And I watched God begin to radically transform my father. See, it wasn't unusual for me to grow up and, and to hear my dad yelling and screaming as he was getting ready for work because he was upset with my mom or whatever had happened. And I remember a couple months after he'd given his life to the Lord, I, I heard these loud noises uh, in the morning and thought my dad was yelling and screaming and cussing again. But actually, he was in the shower singing the hymn, Oh, How I Love Jesus, at the top of his lungs. Right? God, God began to do a radical work in my dad's life. And my dad began to confess his sins. And he confessed them to God, and God had forgiven him. But he knew that he confessed to God, right, for forgiveness. But he confessed to others for healing. And as he began to confess these things that were going on in his life, it began to draw our family back into one another. It began to draw us closer to one another. My dad began to lead our home as a spiritual leader and to take us to church. And now at about this point, God was slowly but surely working and transforming my dad. But as I shared with you, my dad had cheated on my mom the first 20 years of their marriage and he had never told her about it. And two years after my dad had come to know the Lord, he felt like he needed to confess this to my mom. As my dad dropped this confession on my mother, I, I, I literally thought that everything that God had done was for naught. My mom started to struggle with depression and suicidal thoughts. I thought their marriage was surely going to end at this point. And there was even a part of me that was questioning God and saying, God, why would you bring us this far just to crush us? And I watched God do something miraculous. I watched God speak through my mother, who's one of my heroes, and God talked to my mom and he told her, he said, if you want to divorce your husband, you have every biblical reason to do so. But if you're going to stay with him, you have to forgive him. And I watched my mom take a step of faith and walk towards my dad and say, listen, I understand that what's happened has been in the past and that God has forgiven you and he has changed you. And if I'm going to stay in this relationship, I'm not going to be bitter and upset, but I'm going to forgive you and we're going to have a marriage that honors God. Folks, I tell you, if you were to see my parents today, it's, it's incredible, seriously. Like, they, they're hugging each other all the time and making out in public. And I'm like, Mom, Dad, like, they're going back, you know, like, and they're in high school. And I'm like, Mom, Dad, my friends are around. Stop making out with each other. It's a little bit embarrassing. But they love each other. 
They love each other. You're not going to believe what I'm going to tell you now. My mom and dad, now, um, they, they have gone and received training and, and, and on how to help people in their marriages. And they go to different churches and they do marriage intensive workshops and teach other couples how to have relationships that honor God. Isn't that crazy? If somebody would have told me that when I was growing up, that my parents would be teaching other people how to have relationships that honor God, I would have, I would have laughed at you. And yet that's what God has done. And I share this with you because I look at the confession of Nehemiah and I think boldly back to my dad. And my dad didn't teach me how to love God whenever I was growing up. But my dad has taught me more through his failures than he ever taught me through his success. And my dad has taught me how to honor God even in the hardest of situations. And watching my dad step up as a man and confess uh, his shortcomings has drawn me closer to him than I ever had been before. I have more respect for my dad than I can even communicate to you from this stage. And honestly, it's not because of the great successes he had as a teenager, but it was his boldness to confess his weaknesses and to allow him to let God work through him and to teach me that part of a man is not just succeeding, but it's how you handle your failures as well. And to see him love God with everything that he is is incredible. And I think of this story of Nehemiah. And Nehemiah says, I, I confess my sins, my shortcomings. Some of you are sitting in here and you know that you're not leading your homes the way that you're supposed to. I want to challenge you. to. to-